can you be yourself for television? Just be yourself now. That's all I want. I don't want any performance. I just <clears> want you. Can you be yourself? Can you try to be yourself? Do you think you'll be able to be yourself? In most cases, people say, gee, uh, I can't be myself. I don't know what myself is. Myself, uh, gee, trying to be myself, that's really difficult. And when they see themselves on television, you know, when they then see themselves trying to be themselves, yeah. they say, that's not me. Is your own Today's guest know, uh, is Les Levine, is I mean, multimedia artist who is talking with Stephen Poser about TV, video, and life. As far as I'm concerned, like media represents the new spirituality in America. In other words, if there is any spirituality in America, or if there is such a thing as religion, it's television. You know, that television will not stand for anything being taken more seriously than it is taken. Okay, uh -huh. so it will question anything that seems to uh, get a following of any sort. Uh, now, when I said that media wants to render uh, a post-intellectual, post-conscious, actually, society, I would add to that. I don't know whether I put that in there. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> media is in direct opposition to consciousness because it wants essentially to be your meta-consciousness. It wants you to respond to the world the way it has defined responses. Okay. Do you respond to it that way? I mean, when you watch television, are you almost uh, subliminally, I don't like that word, but it's something that suggests itself, um, uh, being given all this, this material that then you think is your own thought somehow? Uh, is that the idea? I mean, I don't know if why religion suggests itself as opposed to, say, some kind of um, dictatorship of the mind. Well, I don't I mean, think don't it's worship. a dictatorship of the mind because, it, uh, because uh, you have to look at it this way. Any thing such as media that is going to get, get the position of power in our society that it has, and it has more power than politicians in as much as it can tell politicians what to do or lose votes, so it has more power than politicians have, anything that can gain that amount of power by its own nature has to be holier than thou. It can't risk, for instance, <laughs> being brought in and told that mm. you're behaving immorally. They have to be, uh, their act has to be cleaner than anybody else's act. So you can't have censorship of TV because TV has to be a self-censoring process. TV couldn't like be a going accusing everybody of everything and then behaving badly themselves. So their position is that they are moral, okay? Also, their position is, uh, the reason I associate it with uh, religion is because we always understand that religion in the past has been something that has given, has been kind of like uh, the purveyor of morals in some way. What to do, what to dress like, what to mm. eat, how to behave in relationship to your next door neighbor, your wife, your brother, your mm. mother, your father. Uh, so it's, it's preaching a, a gospel, that's the idea, yeah, right? It tells it's telling you what, you what to believe and how to think uh, about who you are and how to handle yourself, yeah. right? And how to eat and how to dress and all these. Who to stab, for instance, who you mm -hmm. should stab, who it's right to be against, mm -hmm. who you, how, what form your love should take, what kind of clothing you should wear, uh, uh, what you should think about uh, certain remarks your mother might make or your brother might make or how you should kind of like in general respond to everything there's one doesn't have to have a mind anymore because television like replaces the concept of mind if you're in doubt about anything watch television you'll get the answer and uh, do you believe television uh, yeah do you sure. believe in it uh, absolutely television is a direct reflection of our attitudes you can't tell me that you would watch television and say that your that most of your friends kind of mentality if you can just kind of take a liberalized view of that word isn't on television it is I don't think so I don't know how many people I can think of that when they watch television recognize themselves in the people they see on television I mean it may be true for a certain element of, of the of the population but I, I, I certainly believe that it's well, that's because you have a lot of unusual friends. Well, don't you? Yeah, but I don't think they're as unusual as they think they are. And I don't think I'm as unusual as I think I am, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. One always tends to believe that you're more unique than you really are. Uh, and 
I think that the, the patterns that one sees on television today are pretty much uh, the, the most, the funniest thing about television and everything mm. related to it is that like nobody ever, you don't ever know anybody who eats a TV dinner, okay? However, thou, millions of them, I'm told literally three million are sold per week yeah. in America, okay? Like, one hardly ever runs up against people who use contraceptives, but millions of those are used per week. So, like, I think that one's friends have a large capacity for lying about what they're really like, and television has a way of finding out about that. God, this really sounds awful. I mean, it's like people are pretending to be themselves, but yeah. in fact, they're making themselves up. Uh, in terms of a kind of standard of reference for what it means to be uh, living in this time Absolutely. in this society on the basis of that sort of inventory of things that people are, are, to. I people mean, it's are like performing a menu. all the time. You're saying it's like a menu of, of options. Absolutely. Most of the options that people have, like it would be in our age category, are options that are given to them by the educational system. So they've, they're college kids. They're older college kids. And they look with some disdain okay. on television, don't right. they? Right. And so they have college kids' attitude towards television. Older mm -hmm. college kids, yeah. again. Okay? But is a college kid anything real to begin with? I mean, isn't I that a, a role that's being put together? My bottom line on it would be this, that even though there is some kind of uh, leeway there for who's doing what to who and what have you, yeah. I don't think television is any more dishonest than we are in general. I think we, in general... That may be true. You know, I mean, we being who? Artists? Uh, the world, everybody who, in it. who try to uh, come up with some kind of uh, conception of what they're about, how they're... Uh, their, well, I think their it's project makes some kind of rational sense or other. Is that the idea? I think artists behave pretty much the way uh, every small businessman behaves. I mm -hmm. think they uh, want their product in the world. Uh, they will <clears throat> entertain the boss's wife in order to get their product into the world. They will uh, undercut their competitors, sell it cheaper, do it in a situation that their competitor wouldn't do it. Uh, they're no different than the rest of the world. We can't. How mm -hmm. could we be different? We were brought up in this environment. So therefore, we have to be what we are. It's unfortunate that what we are may not be everybody's ideal of what they would like to be. Well, what's so interesting about new information if we have all we need on television? Well, generally... I mean, do we have all we need on television? I mean, I take it that something uh, that matters to you is that people uh, have access to um, an alternative range, a larger range of information. Mm -hmm. In other words, that they'd be exposed to different uh, ways of organizing one's life, different mm -hmm. beliefs and values, um, different kinds of responses to the, to the elements in the society that we encounter uh, and so forth. Is that <coughs> fair? Yeah, it's fair, but I would want them to start off by trying to be themselves. I well, mean, how do they like figure if they're out posing how to do that somebody. if they're stuck with the, Do they have to turn off the television and never look no. in order to find out who they are? No. I think you don't even need to watch television to know <laughs> what's on television because everybody you yeah, know, know watches know. television so therefore yeah. you're a TV person whether you watch television or not because all your friends are and they're yeah. t but uh, the the important thing that you might have to consider is that television in America is essentially a supermarket okay yeah I like that. I read that in your book you know it it is there to sell you things People think, for instance, that television is there merely to sell you soap. Soap. But I'm here to sell you these, this way of looking. I want everybody who's out there now to look this way. I think it would be great if they did, okay? Now, I'm not, I'm not really talking about that people should look that way, and you're not talking about them. But no. you think this is a serious look, okay, the way you look, <laughs> and I think this is a casual look, the way I look. Yeah. And so when they're out there, they will think you're a serious person. They'll think I'm a casual well, person. Well, I've seen this program before. They, they have doubts about whether I'm a serious person. And um, how would you, I mean, you, you're saying that the image uh, is a kind of composite. It's not just I'm a matter of what Everything that is on television in America is for sale. Well, how could you uh, benefit by selling this uh, way of looking to people? I mean, uh, well, that would is it a commodity? Like that would soap? make me appear. Well, let's, let's take it in terms of, 
how could somebody like, let's say... Well, why, what's your interest in selling your look? Uh, I get to live longer on the medium. Like, if I people see. like my look on television, they're going to say, well, come on again. We like that man's look. Bring that man back. Right. And they'll okay. say, here, like Les they, Levine, that, that guy and if they really, really like interesting. Look, yeah. If they uh, really like my look, they may say, bring him on every night, like Walter Cronkite. I see. And if I have a really serious, heavy voice, they may say, well, when that man speaks, I like his voice, and I think that when he speaks, I can believe it. So they say, get him back again. So the voice is for sale as much as anything else. Now, mm -hmm. my voice is... Uh, considerably higher than Walter Cronkite, so therefore it has less believability. But uh, I don't think I'm lying, if you know what I mean. No, I don't think you're lying either. Uh, so, um, but that is a quality that people somehow, uh, it's an assessment they make on the basis of all these elements that are, the whole context and everything. Mm -hmm. I mean, they have to believe we're not acting out a script, right? That we're not we're uh, going to turn around and say, ha ha, you know, this is a really a, a play, it's a performance. Mm -hmm. We're pretending to be television uh, personalities uh, having a conversation, but in fact, we're, we're actors. Well, I, I, I mean, do you think that I th there's a certain feel myself that, you know, I, I am a video artist, as you know, and I do a lot of video, and I really honestly feel that when I look in the mirror, I don't feel real. And when I look at myself on television, I think, gee, that's really me. You know, I feel much more real electronically than I do as flesh and blood. Well, most people, I should think, would have m more or less the opposite way of seeing themselves. Well, I have a lot of aches and pains in my body, you know, all the time. When I get tired, I have to drink tea or something like that. And w when I'm on television, I don't have to do that, you know. It's just electronic. It's just on tape. One doesn't have to feed it. Uh, one doesn't have to do anything with it. I think it's better to be electronic than it is to be a real body. Yeah, but the question is whether that entity that you're watching there is anything at all, isn't it? No, it is everything. It's as much a representation of me. It's a representation of you. But uh, would you be satisfied to say um, that your, your, your life somehow could be contained in a big library of video, t that, you know, less Levine than the person who did so and so and lived at such and such a period of time is mm -hmm. now installed in this rack of of cassettes. Oh, absolutely. Um, even after his mortal life, somehow. Absolutely, I personally feel that that is really uh, the whole purpose of my life. Is to, is to, is to make yourself immortal. To become videotape. I don't I, uh, not to become immortal, but I feel that you know that uh, nobody <laughs> can become immortal. But I think that. Uh, you know, it's an, an it's an alchemical kind of process that I'm dealing with. I'm trying to turn flesh and mm -hmm. bones into electronics. Is this related to the uh, kind of uh, older idea? I think it's a little, you know, more provincial, perhaps. But mm -hmm. uh, that 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 kind of aura of of magic that people associate with photographs, for example. I mean, mm -hmm. you keep a photograph of your your deceased parents or your lover or mm -hmm. your children, or your mm -hmm. family. Uh, by your bedside, or mm -hmm. you, 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 you don't rip up a photograph of somebody you love. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, there's something like a fetish about it, right? Mm -hmm. uh, whereas um, 